Hello, and welcome everyone to a special guest edition of our music recommendations. Um, I'm Azzy. And I'm Adam, also known as the Black Rose. Mm -hmm. And this time Adam has, uh, he has recommended something for us. Uh, the Palace of Tears album released Halloween of 2020 uh, of Ruination. So it's a little bit old, but it is their debut album and we do love debuts here. So we recommend this album. Absolutely, Azzy. Before I do that, allow me to express my gratitude to you for taking me on this journey. I'm really excited. And uh, yeah, so in terms of um, the Palace of Tears, they are an ethereal dark wave band. That's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> They're an ethereal dark wave band from New Orleans, America, and they consist of two members. Uh, there is LV Darkling on vocals and Eric R. Scheid, who is the uh, multi-instrumentalist, meaning the guitars and the electronics specifically. Although I believe the lyrics kind of go between the two. I think both of them write the lyrics. Um, I know a lot of them are credited to LV Darkling on their band camp page. Actually, I think all of them might be. Yeah, all of them are. Yeah. So this album caught me by surprise. I had initially ignored it because the cover looked like it could have been for an industrial or a metal band. And so, you know, when you're inundated with music and a lot of stuff on Bandcamp gets erroneously put under incorrect tags, I kind of passed over it for other releases. But um, I was actually quite surprised by the operatic vocals on this one paired with the more like dancey beats and synths. So you have the slow vocals with the dancey beats. So. If I may, I basically interpret or describe uh, the Palace of Tears' music as Lycia meets Deform. That's how I interpret them, as Lycia meets Deform. So if you can imagine the music of Lycia and the uh, vocals, or one of the vocals, I should say, from Deform uh, combining, that's how I describe it. And oh my god, it's beautiful. I mean, the album only has seven songs and I've got no complaints whatsoever about any of them. Um, I like the lyrics, I like the um, the tunes, I like, um, you know, the, the voice, um, Darkling's voice. And I especially like the song uh, Cold Dead Skin. Um, and I like the sequencing of the album. So, you know, my two other favorites from before would be The Womb Full of Nectar and Tears of the Moon. You know, I love those songs very, very much. And what I like especially is when it got to Cold Dead Skin, that's when I was able to hear those Lycia elements. Uh, they do that, you know, they'll have some somber, ethereal songs, and then suddenly, you know, one track comes in, it's a bit dancey. And they did exactly that with um, the cold skin, or the dead, sorry, cold dead skin. And, uh, you know, it's an amazing album. I personally like the album cover, but I do agree with you that it can be misleading in this day and age of band camp. <laughs> Yeah, just just a touch. Um, so like I said, when I'm flooded with a lot of music, I, I sometimes have to, for the sake of time, um, pick and choose. And unfortunately, album cover plays a big part in that. <laughs> um, but a lot of this album, it was very immersive, very ambient, very flowy. But I felt like there was one big thing that took me out of just this kind of carry me away vibe, uh, melancholic vibe. And that was at the end of the tracks, they tended to put a couple seconds of silence, which I was just like, oh, this is this is really kind of taking me out of it because there's so much wall of sound quality to a lot of these um, a lot of these other songs, which is unsurprising given that they also tag their their album with um, shoegaze. Yeah, see, I did not notice that at all. Um, I was engaged the whole entire time. Um, and I guess maybe that's just due to excitement, but I wonder if what you are describing is also due to, I think they call it cutting. You know, in their recording, they cut the songs. Um, no, because they all kind of faded away. It wasn't super yeah. abrupt. It was more just like, it was more just like it, you, you felt it because it was the lack of a presence. So you, you take notice because something is now gone. So you're like, yeah. oh, and then the next song came in. But um, if we're going to talk about uh, any like one track on this album, though, I do really want to talk about uh, Tears of the Moon. Yes. Which stood out against the backdrop of the rest of this ambient track, specifically because in 
Uh, there wasn't much difference in a lot of the elements compared to the rest of the tracks, but I really liked this like noise kind of synth sound. Yeah. That they had in the back. And most of the album is, I believe it's all completely electronically programmed except for the vocals. Well, and the guitar, there's a bit of guitar involved. Uh, what... oh, yeah, that's right. There's a six string and a 12 string. Yes. And what I like a lot about that song is it's so cleansing. I mean, the lyrics especially. You know, it talks about you know, uh, tears so wet and hot, uh, droplets onto my skin, my head, my face, down over my body, waves of emotion, pain, agony, bliss, ecstasy, wash over me, tears of the moon. I really like it. I find it's very um, cleansing, like you said. It's, it's just letting go of all those dark emotions. And you know, it kind of makes me think of the full moon, because when the full moon happens, it's basically the end of a cycle. So it's just ending cycle and moving forward letting go of the emotions it's beautiful so if you want to listen to something that is beautiful carry you away very you know like adam said lycia meets uh diform i strongly deform. recommend <laughs> deform excuse yeah. me that's right german <laughs> yeah the art <laughs> yeah. um i strongly recommend checking out uh the palace of tears of ruination um this album was a bit hard for me to review it's not one of the genres that i listen to particularly heavily but this was actually a very lovely album and if you're looking for something to just put you down make you sad this is this this is one that you should go and revisit from last year and I would especially recommend this album to fans of bands like Requiem in White, uh, even Dead Can Dance to some extent, and even Switchblade Symphony. So people that like this kind of uh, vocal, this kind of singing, I definitely would encourage you to look at or look into this album. Um, I'd also recommend them to fans of Manticore Kiss, which the two bands would tour together. That would be lovely. And yeah, it's, it's a great album, can't complain about it. The one thing I do want to advise is that this is nothing um, related to symphonic metal or anything like that. We wouldn't review it otherwise because that's not obscure and dead material. It's ethereal dark wave. And like I said, just think Lycia with the vocals of Deform. That's where I can describe it to you with a lot of epic ambiance. That's how I would describe it. Yeah, so in lieu of Mouse being here, um, I honestly don't have too many, I, I don't, I did not have a favorite vocal for this album, or not favorite vocal, favorite lyric, but in lieu of Mouse being here, Adam is going to deliver today's affirmation for you. Yes, so this affirmation is my own, it's my own quote that I have written in my novel, The Journey of Jeffrey. It goes, do not let people use you as the flower for their fragrance. Meaning, don't let people take advantage of you. Don't go out of your way for people that don't deserve you. Do not be afraid to draw boundaries because you deserve respect and you deserve to feel loved and free. If people won't give you that, they do not have a place in your life because you're a precious flower. Black Rose. All right, so we will see you next time as usual. Bye. Cheers.